This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Well, Houston, Christian, we don't have a problem. We have solutions. Today, what we want to do is we're starting a brand new unit. And this particular unit, we're going to talk about, well, about water. Now, th this particular video is entitled The Hydrologic Cycle, but you're going to see how this leads us to what we're going to call the driving question. So what's the driving question? How is the earth sculpted by water? The earth is changed by water, as you are well aware. And we're going to really dive into the big topics in this, this unit is, is, is water and, and streams, rivers, flooding, but also something called groundwater. So how does the world work in terms of water? Now, interesting stuff here, guys, is that water is found in lots of places. And you're quite well aware, I'm sure you know this, is that most of the water in the world is found in the oceans, 96.5% is salt water. So when we talk about fresh water, it's just this sliver that says 2.5%. Now if we take that 2.5%, we try and figure out where is that water, 30% is groundwater. What takes that? Well, we'll learn more about that later. Then glaciers and ice caps, 68.7. So what we mostly think, this is weird, right? What we most think about the fresh water is we think of lakes and rivers and streams. Look how little, percentage that is. It's only 1.2 percent of all of the fresh water in the earth. And if we look at all the fresh water of the earth, right, it's mostly ground ice and permafrost, okay, that's water that's sort of in soils permafrost like in the polar ice caps. Here's our lakes, rivers, streams, and some in the atmosphere. This is evaporated water, soil moisture, Geez, Louise, there's not a whole lot of water in the world that's usable fresh water that we think about. Interesting, interesting. That's where it is. So let's not talk about now that the topic of this particular segment is what is this hydrologic cycle, right? And you've probably seen this in fifth grade, right? This is the idea that we've got this whole process, evaporation, we've got evaporation, right? We've got this, by the way, this is called transpiration where it evaporates from the trees. All right, it goes up into the clouds and then it comes back on the earth is either rain or snow. This is the ice. Of course, it then goes down river and then there's all this underground water. This is a weird thing, all right? Some people don't realize how very important the underground water is and that all flows essentially back into the ocean, sometimes through the underground system and also through the overground system, the streams, uh, lakes, etc. So uh, copy that down. That's an important thing to understand as we go through to understand that hydrologic cycle. Now there's some terms that we need to make sure we define. So the term infiltration, all right, that is the, um, uh, the, the degree, the degree to which the water is absorbed into the earth, right? So if I've got the soil and it rains, it's a raindrop, then it's going to get absorbed into the soil. So this is going to get to that groundwater we're referring to. So it's the level of infiltration. Sometimes it doesn't infiltrate. If you've got, uh, it has to do with like the type of rock. If this is a, a bedrock, then of course, then the, the water won't infiltrate. It will become a lake or a river or something like that. And so you've got infiltration. But as you know, when it rains, sometimes the water just soaks into the earth. Well, where does it go? It's kind of an important part of this, right? The second word is runoff. This is the water <laughs> that doesn't infiltrate. So that's what runoff is, all right? And uh, transpiration, and I think I've already referred to this. What's transpiration? Transpiration is the water vapor lost from leaf pores. Uh, that's what transpiration is. So as water evaporates from trees, it's kind of weird to think about this. It's not just water that like, you know, pools up on top of the, of the leaf, it's actually the water that's actually evaporating through the leaves, right? So the water's absorbed by the roots. That's where some of the underground water goes, right? It goes back into the plants, travels through the plant, and then it actually evaporates. So that's what transpiration is. And then there's a fancy term called evapotranspiration, and that is a combination of evaporation and transpiration. Remember, evaporation is water evaporating, right, or going from a liquid to a gas, right, liquid to a gas, 
uh, like from a river or a lake or a stream or even the ocean. And transpiration is also a liquid to a gas, but it's coming through the plant system. But when we talk about them as a total, we use this fancy term called evapotranspiration. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Houston, that's not so hard. Remember, the driving question is how does water sculpt the Earth? That's what we're trying to find the answer to. But to understand that, we have to understand the hydrologic cycle. Houston, we've got no problems. We'll see you in class.